Uh, we were just waiting in the wings, and it was so amazing to hear those impressive students. Um, I think to myself, wouldn't it be amazing if all of our students coming out of high school were that confident and impressive? Uh, let me just start uh, before I introduce um, our panel today by saying I, I think it, it, it really goes without saying that we're all impacted in some way, shape, or form by a, a rapidly changing job market. And I think the job market is rapidly changing because of the role of technology. Um, I think there are new job titles, new job categories, um, there are new skills required, and most importantly, I think that there is a, a new level of training required for young people to really succeed in this marketplace. Unfortunately, I think that there are times that the classroom isn't keeping up with the needs of this rapidly changing environment. And I think it's what's leading to uh, this widening skills gap, um, economic gaps, et cetera, and putting uh, pressure on the economy. And, and that's an interesting statement to make when there's a sub 4.0 unemployment rate. I think that, that that rate itself sometimes hides uh, a looming crisis of underemployment that, that we're not really um, uh, seeing today that, that can uh, lead to crisis down the road. Um, and, and, and furthermore, at the, at the middle school and, and K th the high school levels, I think the parents, teachers, and sometimes even career counselors are also having a difficult time um, advising children about this rapidly changing workplace. And what we have found at K-12 is it's absolutely necessary to bring um, industry into the learning process uh, because it is, it is relevant. And we'll talk a little bit about how we'll do that in just a minute. Uh, but, but at K-12, we've, we've invested um, in children by offering um, an online learning management system that um, a number of schools can tap into around the country. And furthermore, we are now um, offering a career readiness um, element to that learning management system that we'll also talk about in just a moment. Um, let, let's take a minute just to watch a, a very brief video about K-12. We're K-12, and our story is really the sum of the over one million personal stories of the students we have served. For some, this option lets them pursue their passions. Some were struggling in traditional school and needed extra help. Some faced challenges, and some need an extra challenge. They make me inspired. To each of these students, our purpose and our promise is to meet them where they are and help them thrive. We accomplish this through an online model of instruction, combining live, teacher-led sessions with hands-on learning and cutting-edge technology to deliver immersive, engaging, self-directed lessons. Some schools have physical classrooms, and all schools offer outings, clubs, and in-person events. As a teacher, I'm able to see real-time data, how the student's doing, and provide assistance if I think that they're really struggling with something. And now we are adding a new chapter to the K-12 story. Our Destinations Career Academies are focused on delivering high quality career readiness education for all students to close the skills gap plaguing businesses and to position our youth to lead America forward. This is a lot more fun. I like to do it. With the help of these programs, I'll be able to get to where I want to be. The K-12 story is over a million voices strong and growing every day. Thank you. We, we would like to uh, increase access um, to all students uh, to career readiness. Um, helping me talk about that today are Heather Buskirk, who is um, a project-based learning specialist formerly with the IBM P-TECH schools, who's joined K-12 to um, ramp up project-based learning uh, through all of our curricula, but, but, but most specifically with the Destinations Career Academies, and Nick Sutherland, who's the head of school of our Wisconsin Destinations Career Academy. Um, I'll start with you, Nick. Um, if you would, just talk to the audience a little bit about your school, the Wisconsin um, Destinations Career Academy, and, and how you look at career readiness today. Yeah, so the Destinations Career Academy of Wisconsin is a virtual public charter school in the state of Wisconsin that uh, serves a statewide student base. And we have a, a career readiness model uh, that we drive 
through our General Advisory Council, and they help us to identify industry pathways that are relevant in the state of Wisconsin uh, to make sure that we offer students pathways that lead to jobs or lead to post-secondary readiness. So currently we're offering uh, IT programming and network security. We have a health science CNA pathway that uh, has been successful. We've got uh, multiple business pathways, and then we have a very unique partnership with the Operating Engineers Local 139, the state heavy machinery operators, where they've actually taken uh, their adult apprenticeship curriculum, turned it into an online curriculum, and developed a pre-apprenticeship program that we now offer to students all around the state. And then wherever possible, so we, we take students through that that uh, preparatory and then advanced level courses. We get them that uh, capstone experience where they, they, that leads to an industry certification. And wherever possible, we also engage them in youth apprenticeship or worksite learning or, or pre-apprenticeship in some instances. Uh, in wherever possible, we also tie in uh, dual credit opportunities to our technical college system to where students are able to earn college credit while they take those courses in high school. Um, an example would be our CNA program right now. It's a preparatory sequence that then passes the student off to the technical college to take the labs and earn the certification that they need to go into industry. So, so Nick, it's, it's a predominantly online program, but you also have hands-on. Um, how, how, how do the hands-on portions work? We do, and there's, there's a couple of different versions of that. The, for the CNA pathway, the, they do it through their area technical college. For our operating engineer students, we have a student named Zach right now who's gone through the entire sequence of courses. He's got a job with an affiliated contractor who's a roofing contractor, and he is now applying to be an adult apprentice while he's still in high school. And then we currently are also working with our uh, business classes, is uh, working with a new project-based learning course. And th just this week, they're going to trek bicycles, and they're going to be doing a, an, an industry-developed project that they'll then take to our general advisory council on the 21st of this month, and they'll give their presentations, they'll get industry feedback from those professionals that they'll be able to use to develop their professional skills. That sounds fantastic. So, so lots of practical application, mm -hmm. which, which falls right into your uh, area of expertise, Heather. How, how are you essentially looking at project-based learning, and, and what is it? How could you describe it, um, and how does it differ from traditional uh, teaching? Right, so the big difference is that we're engaging students through these authentic, these real opportunities and challenges um, that allow them to develop the skills and knowledge that they're gonna need beyond school. Too often school and the real world are considered separate entities. This really bridges that gap and is engaging them in work that, that looks like and feels like the work of their lives around school. So it's interesting, as you, you mentioned, um, authentic, authenticate, and, and sometimes we talk about industry and industry professionals authenticating uh, project-based learning. What does that mean exactly? So often it means that the teachers are bringing in an industry or community professional or a community member um, to provide the context for the challenge, to provide um, an interesting problem for students to solve or an opportunity for students to work towards. And that becomes the framing of the, the project. And then the teacher, as the real expert in the learning and the expert in the content, looks for ways to weave together that authentic experience with what students need to know and be able to do and provide the support for students to gain the knowledge and confidence to tackle those real problems. Oh, very good. Um, we, we've got just about a minute left, but I've got a, another follow-up question for you, Heather. And, and it really relates to, and I'm sure everybody in the audience is wondering, you know, how do you engage in, in project-based learning, um, educational delivery in an online environment? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know there are virtual careers now, um, but even traditional careers and life has such a virtual element to it. And so I think we're really in a place where if we're doing right by students, we need to be preparing them for that environment. We need to be providing them access to the skills to be able to collaborate with people at long distances, to be able to critically think, to be able to problem solve, to be able to manage their time and task in virtual projects and virtual project work, to be public speakers in a virtual forum, as well as you know, written and other types of um, communication work. And the teacher really takes on the role of the coach and facilitator of that learning, partially because the project and because now you have the opportunity to bring in that outside expertise to be the audience of the student's work. So the teacher is not that gatekeeper of knowledge and the only audience for student learning. They're there coaching, cheering that student on and helping them prepare in their polished 
their work so it's professional enough that they could share it with other adults. Excellent. Thank you very much, um, Heather, and thank you, Nick, and thanks to the audience today. I think yeah, we all understand what's happening um, economically. I, I think these types of efforts really help prepare young people for uh, a new workplace. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.